Hi, welcome to a video tutorial from Robojax. In this video, we are going to learn about array, we are going to learn about for loop, we are going to learn about while loop, and also we are going to learn about do while loop. ESP32 starter kit from SunFounder. This is the best ESP32 learning kit from SunFounder. It has this ESP32 microcontroller, which has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This board can do everything Arduino Uno can do or many other Arduinos can do, plus extra more features. Because we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the possibilities are endless. You can get connected to the cloud or do the control or read information or values via your mobile device or your desktop or over the cloud from a far location. It comes with a camera extension kit where you can stream the video over Wi-Fi either through the cloud or to your network and also it comes with micro SD card where you can save uh, images on the micro SD card or you can write from the device any information, log the information on the device and read it back. You can power the board using this included 18650 lithium battery and it has built-in charger where you can connect micro USB and charge the battery. The kit comes with 320 pieces of component that you can learn tons of projects. Let's get started with this. First, let's see what array is. If you want to define, let's say, age 25, but re you realize that you want to have multiple age, let's say you have age 1, 25, age 2, 21, age 3, 23, age 4, 30, then is there any bet better solution to accommodate this? Because we are just defining different age and when you are adding one or two to identify it. So is there any one variable that holds multiple value? The answer is yes. So we can have all these in one variable and it's called array. So we are defining it something like this. Integer, age, and all these values are, are inside these curly parentheses. So in terms of position, we are identified with index 0, 1, 2, 3. Accordingly, the first one is always 0 and it goes up. So this is a data type, if we are uh, like uh, ordinary data definition, if it is uh, integer, we use integer, if you want float or car or whatever you want, the data type uh, is valid. And then this is the name of our variable, and this means array. So this is the name of array, and because we have this uh, square bracket around it, this means it's array, and these are our values for this age. Now, how we can read each element of array? Let's say we have this uh, array called age with all these values. We can say serial print and then age and then put one. So this one, age one, will print 21 because one means referring to that age is here and then one is here. So go to this array and get element 1, which is 21. This will print 21. And if you put 0, then it will be 25. And if we put here 2, it will be 23. And if we put here 3, of course, it will be 30. Now, how can we update the value of, of an array? These are uh, uh, my values on the same array. To update it, we use the same way age for example one this is updating this value equal to new value so this value will go inside that and our array which was like that now 21 has changed to 42 and if we want to let's say put 22 in 3 and then this number 3 will change to 22 and if you put 18 to 1 to 0 the 0 element is changing to 18 and if you want to put 20 into index Two. So in this case, to this will become 20, as simple as that. Now, we can also define an empty array. For example, you want to mm, define an array called marks. And because you don't know the values, you can define it with the type. 
or the type and here it's very important to put a number at the beginning because when we were defining it like this because the number are, are known we didn't need to put it but here because the numbers are unknown we have to uh, assign it at the beginning so which means allocate a special area for this array with four elements so it can accept only four and it cannot be changed so and we can fill it one by one for example these values 49.5 45.7 36.2 40.7 .7. in terms of index this is 0 1 2 and 3 and we can do it like this 0 49.5 and then 1 this value the same as before we were updating it when we were updating it and then 36.2 and 40.7 goes to index position number 3. Now, how we can read all values of an array at once? So, for that we need to write a special code called loop. And here is something called for loop, int i equals 0, and it has 3 separate elements so one element two element and three element separated with semicolon uh, initially it, it comes at this point and whatever is between these two curly parentheses will be executed for this example i just put this print but you can do anything you want you can have huge long code that could be executed we are just doing this i to be printed so we learn about it i is equal zero it comes to this point and it, it compares it so it starts in here and then compares i is zero is zero less than four if that is true it proceeds other if it is true it will proceed with the execution of the code if not true it will exit and the loop is done in this case i is zero zero is smaller than four so we come to this point and it will print i which is zero because i was zero and it print this i now it comes here now and we are incrementing it and it becomes 1. This plus plus means add 1 to i. So it means increment or i becomes 1. And then we go here to compare. Is 1 less than 4? True. If it's true, it comes here and prints 1. Then it comes here, it becomes 2, 2 less than 4. Now, now the value is 2 and then it's true. 2 less than 4 and print 2 comes here and then increments it it becomes 3 compare 3 less than 4 true come here and print 3 now it becomes comes here and it becomes 4 increments it and we when we compare 4 is less than 4 or not it's false 4 is not less than 4 and exit so this is how a for loop works and this was this portion is executed only once at the beginning and then uh, we will never come back to this point so it's always in here now let's see we have this array of these values 30 27 22 31 and these are the position of index and we want to print it so we say the same loop except here we say age i so this i is changing 0 1 2 3 so it goes 0 1 2 3 and when i is 0 we get 30 when i changes 1 we get 27 and it becomes 2 we get 31 and then we, when it gets 2 we get 22 and when it's 3 we get 31 so this way we can read all the values and whatever we want to do, we can do it in here. Now let's see how we can fill up an array with a loop. Here we have defined a variable called price of type integer. The length is 10. So we know it's 10. Here we write a for loop with initializing, initializing i with 0 and i less than 10. So it goes from 0 to 10 to 9 and it will have we will have 10 values of i and here we want to fill it up we say price i this i comes here so we dig, get the position if it's zero it will be zero this is just an example we want to fill it up we want to get i and plus 
three. Whatever else you want to do, you can do it. So we are filling it up. So i is zero, zero plus three. It will i is zero, and we will fill it up with three. And if it is one, we get four because one plus three, and then if it's two, two plus three is five, and three plus three is six. And four, when i is four, it will be seven, five, it will be eight, six will be nine, seven will be ten. And then we have eight is eight plus three, eleven, and nine is twelve. And after that, when it comes here, 10, 10 is not less than 10, it will exit. So now let's see how we can read the same way all these values of price. We have already mentioned it. We just say price i, and i is less than 10. It goes 0, 1, 2, 3, because 0 starts here, it says 0. So we start less than 3 means 9, it goes up to 9, and it will read all the values for us. And it will read all the values for us. So now let's see what is a while loop. It's a type of loop which will execute block of code until certain condition is met. And when the condition is met, the loop exits. So now it's different. It, it can look, look at the condition. So to define it, we type while, open close parenthesis, and then curly um, braces. And here, these are the two parenthesis. And curly braces are here and the condition will be here if this condition is true as long as this condition is true it will execute whatever code we have in here this is a block of code whatever you want to write now uh, let's see example one we have b equal four and while comes is four greater than zero true now we are decrementing it so this is true then we come here, decrement 4 less, uh, 4 subtract 1. And in this case, we are decrement 4 and b becomes 3. And this line prints 3. After this, the uh, while loop comes back here, compares. Is 3 greater than 0? True. Comes here and decrements it, it becomes 2. And here we will print it 2. After that, we go back is 2 greater than 0? True. It comes back to this point and decremented 2 becomes 1. So we subtract. And in this line, we print it. It's equal 1. Now is 1 less than greater. And after that, we come to this point and compare. Is 1 greater than 0? True. And we come here and we decrement. It becomes 0. And then this line prints it. And when it comes here, now, is 0 greater than 0? False. The while loop exits. And nothing happens here, exits. So this is one example. You can write it because it's very simple. I don't need to even demonstrate it. Example number 2. We have b equals 0. This time we put if b is, b is 0. Remember, this was b is 4. And now we are incrementing. So we say if b is less than 4, which is true, uh, then we compare if it's true, then we come here and we print 0, then uh, increment, so b, b becomes 1, and then we come back here, compare, is 1 less than 4, true, come here, print 1, increment 2, and then come here, is 2 less than 4, true, come here and print it, and increment it, 3, is 3, less than 4, true, and then come here and print 3, and increment becomes 4. Now it comes back here, is 4 less than 4, false. The loop exits. Now let's have a look at example 3. This time we are using true and a variable. Here it says while j. This means while j, j means true automatically, while j, the value of j is true. We don't need to put equal sign or anything or comparison, we just put j. Because it's a boolean, we have spoken about this before. So, now we, if it's true, so now because it is true j initially, this is true, it comes to this point and prints b, 0. Because b is 0, and then we increment b, b becomes 1. And here we say if b is 
And here we say if B is equal 3, this 2 equal means this is assignment. When you put 1 equal, if you put 2 equal, we are comparing it. If B equal 3, if it is true, then we say set this to false. This is not true. So if it's not true, this condition will not work and it will come back. And still it is true and then prints it. 1 and increments it. 2 is B equal 3. No. Come here, compare true and then come print 2 and then come here increment becomes 3 and here is b equal uh, 3 true then we say j equal false and then this is equal false and the code comes here while j j is j true no false exit so the loop exits this way we have another loop so there is another way with a break b is equal less than 4, b is 0, and we go b with less than 4. This will do the same thing if b is equal to, then we say break. Break means don't continue and exit from this loop. Don't even go there. So we put break. So break is a new word, a new term for you. Uh, get familiar with this. Now we have another loop called do while. And do while is different. It executes something first and then compares. So we, what it means is this will execute something at least once. Uh, but while loop cannot even execute once if the condition is not met. So we say do and open close parenthesis and then while here. Now b is equal 4. So we come here. b decremented becomes 3. And then uh, we print it. So 3. Then it comes here, is b greater than 0? True, because if 3 is greater than 0, it comes back here. And then from here, and it decrements, it becomes 2, and print it, 2, and then compare. Is 2, is 2 greater than 0? True, comes back here, makes it 1, and then b is 1 now, it prints it, equal 1. Then compare, is 1 greater than 0? True, comes back here. Now it comes here, is, is, it, is 1 greater than 0? True. It comes here, decrements it, y, b is 0, and then this line prints it. After that it goes and compares, is 0 greater than 0? False. And this is not true, and the loop will exit.